What is going on everybody? My name is Monkferno and welcome to a very special video. In today's video, we are going to be going over everything that you will need to know about a draft league's document. Um, whether you are the creator and owner of a draft league or whether you're the stat keeper or whether you're just a coach um, competing in a league, this is going to cover everything that you will need to know about a draft document. Everything that needs to go in it from an administrative standpoint to keeping it up and running and how everything should lay out and be located and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump straight into the video because there will be questions and answers at the end of the video. Um, thank you so much to people in the UGA who sent me questions that needed answering. And yeah, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So the first thing is you're going to want a document on Google Sheets. Um, and the reason I say Google Sheets and not, um, uh, what is it? it, Microsoft, it's not It's not Word, oh frick, I forgot what it was. But basically, you want an online spreadsheet, so that way it can be updated and it goes to everybody at the same time. You're not having to share back and forth or in between like a cloud, or maybe some people just don't have the office package. Um, and so Google Sheets, it's totally free, uh, just have a Google email. That's literally all you have to do to have Google Sheets and you can do it. It'll share with everybody. It's super duper easy um, to share and get around and it updates on the fly and everybody can see it. You can see everybody who's currently looking at the document along with you um, and you also see them around in the boxes and stuff like that. So first page that you need to have, as you guys see down here at the bottom, there are several different uh, sheets that will be going on. But the first and foremost is you need to have a front page. Now, some people like to do a welcome page. I think that that's unnecessary because um, you can do like a welcome, you know, message in the Discord server or whatever you're using to communicate on. The, the document is strictly business. It's not so much of a, hey, welcome. Uh, it is a Let's get down to business. Here's where everything is official and all that good stuff. So you need to lay out uh, your rules. That should be your first page is laying out everything. So you need to have tiers. Are you going to do mainly tiers or are you going to do a point system? Um, are you going to do draft? Almost all drafts do a snake draft because that's just the most fair. Um, randomize it. How many Pokemon are you going to draft? Um, this is specifically for Pokemon, by the way, uh, if I haven't mentioned that already. Um, list out specific rules and clauses that you're going to abide by in your league. So for this league, uh, if G if a G-Max pick gets taken, so let's say I draft G-Max Venusaur, then that means somebody can't go into Tier 1 or Tier 2 um, where regular non G Max Venusaur is um, and take that. So once G Max Venusaur is taken, only I can take that um, and only I have Venusaur. Or if you're in a VGC, that's primarily for singles. If you're in a VGC league, um, you can have somebody who can only G Max Venusaur, but then you can have somebody else who can um, take regular Venusaur and well and still Dynamax it. They just can't use the G Max form, is all. Um, lay out when your draft will begin, lay out specific times, when is the end dates and when are battles due by, especially if you are a YouTuber league. Um, you need to lay that out of like when videos are scheduled to go up, just all this good general information, um, that you need to be doing so that way you can run this league very efficiently. All right. So next up on the list is laying out, you know, how many weeks are you going to be in, is the regular season going to be some weeks, some, uh, leagues do 12, some do 10. Uh, I just realized that the UGA actually just changed it from 12 to 10 weeks. Um, Lay out specific clauses like what's supposed to go on. So all Pokemon sets to level 50. That's standard for a VGC league um, and for singles league. Um, are duplicate Pokemon allowed? Are duplicate held items allowed? Um, just all this good stuff. Just general information that everybody needs to know. And so that way there's no room for questions. How many points are you going to start off with? I know some drafts do 250 and others do 400. Um, and so that will be, uh, that, you know, decides how much your tiers are going to be worth each and every time. Uh, and so yeah, just all the general stuff needs to be laid out on the rules page. All right, so next up we have a very important page, which is a ban page. So you need to have for, especially for uh, the UGA um, or any VGC league that is starting up, you need to have a ban page of which Pokemon are banned. So that way you know this is not part of our draft. You cannot pick this. Um, and so for VGC, basically all the mythicals and most of the legendaries are gone. Um, because it's VGC. We're, we're abiding by VGC rules, so that means legendaries aren't, most legendaries aren't allowed. Um, for the IBA, which is a singles league, we actually do allow legendaries. Um, so we allow Pokemon like Zeraora, Zarud, 
Um, actually, I don't think we allowed Zarud because it came in in the middle of Season 2 for us. Um, but then, as you can see, we have banned abilities, banned moves. Um, and so, as you can see with all these banned moves, you have these like little triangles in the corners. These are specifically laying out which moves you are not allowed to use. Um, and so, it's a good thing to clarify... Um, it's a good thing to clarify what you mean by omni boosting moves. So for us, omni boosting moves meant if it had, if it will, or if it has a chance to raise every stat at once. Um, so moves like ancient power, no retreat, clangor soul, all of those are banned. And so just making sure that you go through your league with a fine toothbrush and making sure that there's very, very if none, no loopholes to get through. And then we also have items. Again, just be very specific about everything that you want to make sure it comes across very clear to every coach. Um, so yeah, next up is the all important tier list. Every tier list for every league is going to look very different. This is just a basic one that uh, I helped create for the UGA. Um, they're, they're, they are strictly copying and pasting from the WV, WBE VGC tier list. Um, and so I literally just typed in everybody's name and then I made it look cool with a bunch of colors of their primary typings, all that good stuff. Um, it just makes it look a little bit nicer. Um, so yeah, how many points are, are each tier, uh, is each tier going to be worth? Um, what these gray boxes are is if, let's say, I'm the coach of the Houston Hackstress, which I am, and I decided to dr uh, draft GMAX Alchemy. I'll just put my initials right here, and that tells you that this Pokemon in this tier has been taken. So, you just type that in, and everything here is just manual. It's not too hard. Um, so just while you're drafting, make sure that you keep up with, on the uh, tier list, so that way people know what is and what ha- or what- has and hasn't been drafted. All right, so another big page is the schedule. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to have your draft before the schedule. And the reason that this is, is because people during the draft, if you release the schedule before the draft, um, people might be gearing their teams towards facing their week one, two, or three opponents. Um, and so you don't want that to happen. You definitely wanna send out your schedule after the draft has happened. Um, and so this is just a basic schedule. Um, you'll have, you know, Monkferno going against, uh, you know, Sam this week. Um, if you want to, you can add like a little crown or something next to it for the person who won that week, just so it makes it a little bit more interesting. I don't know. Um, actually, Sam actually did point this out to me is that there wasn't a completed column. And I thought that's very weird. Um, I didn't really think of that. And so it just shows you like right now, this just shows that the match hasn't been completed. You just click this little drop down. It's a check mark that shows that y'all have battled for that week. Um, so yeah, uh, another thing that you need to do, and I didn't actually, I don't have this on, you know, my, uh, you know what, actually, hang on, Let, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to do a little bit of live editing here. So, um, hang on, let me show you guys. So as you guys can see right here, this is the discord server for the IBA. Dear goodness. That is a very big um window yeah okay so this is the match stats channel for the iba as you guys can see uh we have a dedicated channel to uh for people to post match stats um this is basically what match stats should look like okay um they should look something along the lines of this it says you know monkferno um and they brought cinderace Trakion, drapion uh this is from the first two matches of the iba this season Basically, it just shows, you know, who brought what and how many kills and deaths that it got. And so you will have to keep up with this manually um, during the battle. That is one thing that you will have to do manually and do continuously throughout battles is just make sure you don't have to do it during the battle, but just make sure that you rewatch your video, make sure that everything is correct. Um, especially like during the battle, like I don't do like the whole numbers things, um, but definitely make sure to keep track of the kills right here. So, okay, I'm... Coma O kills Trachyon, all that good stuff. Um, if something dies to recoil, um, how are you guys going to keep track of that? Well, Cinderace dies to Life Orb, so it's not a kill for the other team. It's just a death for my team. And so that's one way you can kind of fiddle with differential for your opponent. So yeah, um, reporting stats should look something like this. Um, these are two different weeks. So that's why there's that big space. But yeah, this just basically shows, um, you know, who died um, and the specifics of it. And so make sure that these are very, very detailed. Um, they don't have to be detailed as in like what moves, um, but just make sure that they are correct because if not, that messes up match stats, which we'll get into in a little bit. And I'll show you all how to operate the match stats page. All right. So now that we have that out of the way, um, we're going to be moving on to the standings page. This one is, um, more comprehensive and it's just for the league in general. Uh, so whatever league, uh, usually I'll have like a fun facts box that kind of looks similar to this, but it's not needed. Um, but yeah, so basically this is just keeping track. So you'll have all your teams listed in this row. 
Um, these are just green for how many teams will make it to playoffs. If you have eight teams that will make it to playoffs, first eight are green. If you have everything six, first six green, you guys get the idea. Um, having the record, the record should look something like this. So the amount of wins and the amount of losses. So this tells me, you know, Houston, yeah, Haxorus. All right, and then all my ad colors in the background or something. Um, this shows me that the Houston Actress, they've won one game and they've lost two games. Um, and so their differential, you know, might be, uh, you know, minus three or something if I got beat really bad. So I'll have, you know, four kills and seven deaths. And so you'll do kills. Differential is uh, calculated by death or kills minus deaths. So this makes sense. Kill leaders. This is just for the Pokemon that have the most kills. Um, just insert everything there. Completely fine. Um... But yeah, these are just to make sure like everybody knows where they're standing. Um, for the IBA, um, this is what ours look like currently. Oh gosh, hang on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is what ours look like currently. I have seemed to have moved that. I am. I apologize immensely. Um, but yeah, so I, as you guys can see, this is what it looks like. It looks a little chaotic, but it's honestly very, very simple. These are just the teams that have made it um, and are guaranteed a spot in playoffs. These are the teams that have no spot in playoffs. As you can see, I did not make it this season. But yeah, um, what I did is for because I'm special and I like to run things my own way, I, I added this column so that way it shows um, how much a team moved up, down, or stayed the same uh, in between weeks. So the Vancouver Corvonites have been sitting nice up top at number one for a while, so they have not moved... Um, in terms of rankings, but the Halifax Hitmonchans were in third the week before, the Chicago Dragapults were in fourth the week before, you guys get the point. Um, and so yeah, this is what a, a standings page should look like. Um, so yeah. Alright, uh, you need a playoffs, um, I don't know, you need a play playoffs page. It won't come in handy till playoffs, um, at, but it's just nice to have, um, so that way people know who's in the tournament, who's facing against who, um, and it just looks nice. And especially if you're going to keep the document around afterwards, it looks very, very nice to know, okay, uh, this person made it this far, whatnot. Um, one thing that I do like about this is this specifically is laid out, so that way all you have to do is click a button. So Jay and I are going up against each other. Let's say that Jay wins. I just click this check mark. bam, Jay moves on to the next round. Uh, Jay beats, I don't know, maybe we'll do Goki Gamer. We'll do Goki Gamer. Um, let's say Goki wins. Then Goki just automatically moves around and goes to the championship. So yeah, this is basically um, just a fun way to, you know, just, just keep uh, keep track, excuse me, of uh, who, who's making it far into playoffs. Um, so what these numbers mean, uh, these are just the seeds. So if we're going to go back to the standings page, which is, this is where it comes in handy. So the number one seed, um, in this case, would be the Houston Haxorus, and so Monkferno would move into this seed. Because I was number one, I get this spot, and I get to play off against the number eight player, um, who is just barely making it into playoffs, and so that's kind of my reward, is I get to go up against weaker opponents because I did so great. Um, you guys can say that it's unfair. It really is, but at the end of the day, this is just how it's done. So, yeah. All right. Um... Finally, this is going to where most of the video is going to take place. I know that I've already spent a lot of time, but there's so much in this one page that I really need uh, to drill into y'all's heads. And this is where most of the stats are going to be um, on a more daily basis. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and explain this page in its entirety. And I'm actually going to move over to the IBA because this will make more sense. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Actually, hang on. We're going to zoom back out. So explaining everything. You're going to have your team name and team logo right here in this box. You're going to have the coach logo. If they have a YouTube channel, this is usually what goes here. If not, just use their Discord picture, all that good stuff. Um, it's coached by and leave their Discord name uh, so that way they, so that way, um, if an opponent is looking at their team, they know who to message. Um, time zones. Time zones are important because let's say um, I'm in Eastern Standard Time and, I'm, and my opponent is in Central Time. Um... There's a one hour time difference. So if I'm saying, hey, let's battle at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, that's great. That's actually signaling to him uh, that he needs to be ready by five because Central is an hour behind Eastern. And the greater the time difference between two opponents, the more that this matters. So we, for the IBA, we have somebody who I believe is seven or six hours ahead. Um, and so that really matters when trying to deal with timing and uh, when to do the battle. So this is just very, very great to have. Um, if you're more of a YouTube-based league, having their YouTube, having their Twitter linked is very, very great. Um, this is the number of times that you made it through a championship in a league, number of times you were runner-up or second place, um, number of times that you made it to playoffs, and then overall, the how many times you were the regular season first. So in this case, um, it's going to be SV Tornado uh, for the IBA. But 
Um, yeah, so over here you have the mons that you drafted. Um, so you want to keep track. This needs to be... There's a, there's a reason that this black bar is separating these two sections, and I'll tell you why in a second. Because these are the mons that you actively have and are able to draft from. Uh, so as you can see, I have Blastoise as my G-Max. You have the different tiers here, which are listed. Um, over here, you have the number of points. That way I can keep up with, you know, just how many points do I have left. So if I want to make a trade or a free agent swap, that matters. Um, all that good stuff. So over here, I have some fun facts. I like leaving fun facts everywhere just because why not? Um, over here in this, I'm actually going to be omitting this from the next... Um, from the next iteration of this draft. Um, this is just the stats of every Pokemon. I didn't find it to be too useful this season, and it was a lot of hassle, especially with the amount of free agent swaps and trades that were made. Um, and so overall, it just wasn't worth it. So I'm probably gonna be taking this out, but I would just bump all this stuff up. So yeah. Um, yeah, all the ones that you drafted, all the ones that you dropped. Now you might be thinking, well, if I dropped them, why does it matter? Here's the reason. So when calculating stats, first off, it's good to have just the typings. That way people know what they're working with, all that fun stuff. This is just good to know. Um, the reason you want to keep your dropped Pokemon on your stat sheet is because it can be, a person can massively increase their differential at the last minute. So last week, let's say I have Drapion that I want to drop. I brought it most of the season. It hasn't done well in terms of kills and it's died almost, it's died every time that it, it has been brought. So if I want to, you know, at the very last week, drop Drapion, that's, that's six differential that I gain overall. Um, I lose one in kills, but then I also lose seven which is a net differential of plus six, which is phenomenal. So that could be the last little thing that, you know, I might need to boost me into playoffs. Um, and so you definitely want to make sure that, um, you know, you keep your dropped mons and their stats calculated um, going towards the team uh, overall. So, yeah. And then it's just good to keep track of, like, remembering what you had, why you dropped it, whatnot. So... Um, finally, let's go ahead and get into the how you actually calc. For those of you who are wondering, you know, do I need to keep track of the KD ratio? Yes, you do, but it's automated for you. And so that's what I've done with this tier list page is that literally, if you if you are a stat keeper, it's not as hard as you think it is, all right? All this stuff sounds and looks funny. Um, and so people are making trades and stuff like that. Yes, you have to swap all that stuff out. But overall, most of your um, job is to just keep track of stats. So was the Pokemon brought? So in this case here, I'll use I'll use this one since this is a blank page. Um, so for our example over here that I showed earlier. So Monkferno, he brought Cinderace. So, you know, we'll have Cinderace, Cinderace, we'll have Rotom, uh, we'll have... Uh, I forgot what I brought. We'll bring Drapion. We'll bring Sylveon. We'll, we'll bring all these things, right? Uh, I forgot what I... Uh. Okay, so as you guys can see here that I, I've listed out all my Pokemon now. Um, I'm not going to do the typings or abilities. I don't need to import that stuff. But as you guys can see here, um, this is how you're going to calculate stats. So, did was the Pokemon brought this week? So, as you guys can see, Cinderace was brought. So, that means you just add a 1. You just simply add a 1. Because he was brought one time. Um... As you guys can see here, my opponent did win. These are actual match stats from the first week. So my opponent did win, which means that everything that's brought this week does not get a plus one win. Um, the wins only matter is if the Pokemon was brought on a winning team. So if you win that week, all six Pokemon that were brought get a win. Um, it doesn't matter if they died, if they got a kill. It doesn't matter. As long as they were brought to the battle then they get a win. They don't have to have been sent out on the field. They don't have to get a kill. They don't have to get a death. If they were simply brought that week on the team, then they make it. They get a plus one win. Uh, so in this case, I would not get a win. But um, Cinderace. So this tells me that Cinderace got three kills and he only and he died once. Basically, he wasn't resurrected and brought back to life. So he didn't get two deaths. So he gets three kills and one death. And I might be thinking, wow, that was kind of cool. And, and you only need to do this for the Pokemon that were brought. So it's not every Pokemon every week. It's literally just six Pokemon on a given team. And you might be thinking, wow, that's kind of cool. So what my stat sheet does is it automatically takes this, it does the kills minus the deaths, and it puts it into this cell. So you don't need to keep track of KD ratios. It is completely automated for you. Now you might be thinking, well, what about, you know, differential and all that stuff? That's a great question. So if we keep adding, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick cut and I'm going to add all of the match stats up. Alright, so I'm done updating match stats. Um, 
It didn't take long. It literally took me less than 30 seconds to update. Um, but that was because I absolutely got wiped. Almost nothing got killed, so I'm going to fudge the numbers just a little bit. Let's just say Terrakion got two kills, okay? Um, so what this does is this cell right here takes everything from here and from here, and it adds it all up to right here. So this is why it's important to keep track of the match stats. Um... Yeah, let's go back over to the IBA. Um, so what this does is this keeps me honest. Um, as you guys can see, I traded away Cinderace. Um, so those 17 kills, even though it's not officially on my team, it's still contributing towards my record and my kills and all that good stuff, just so I don't have a differential of minus 29, okay? Um, so what this does is it takes all these numbers and it puts it here. Then it does the same thing for the deaths. So everything, all every death from every Pokemon that I've ever had on this team is calculated and shoved into this cell. This is how differential is determined. There's a difference between KD ratio, which is per individual Pokemon, and differential. This is the differential cell. And so it does the same thing as the kills and deaths for the individual. It takes it for the entire team, 34 kills minus 46 deaths, comes out of a differential of minus 12. This honestly has helped so much. One, it saves on time because it's automated um, and, it, and it's auto-calculated by Google, okay? Um, it, it's auto-calculated so there's no you know, mistakes that, uh, that could be made on my part. There's no, you know, having to figure out the KD ratios for everybody and then do the differential and update it. It's all automated for you. Literally, all you have to do as a stat keeper is just update these. Just update D these. This is where 90% of your work is going to be within these cells right here. Um, brought. Did, was it brought this week? Yes. Did your, did that team win this week? Yes. Okay, great. Then it's a win. How many kills did it get? Four. How many deaths did it get? One. There you go. See, look, it just makes sense. Like, it's all automated for you. Um, and so if trades are made, you'll have to swap those out, move everything down, etc. But I'm actually going to go ahead and do back that because that's actually going to mess up my actual stats. Um, but yeah, as you guys can see, like, there's literally, everything is just there for you to take advantage of. Um, like, you have to fill in this, because you have to fill in these columns because this is determined by the league. Um... And, you know, what each team drafted and that's, but that's all upfront work. Once you get past the upfront cost, it massively pays off and it's super duper simple, super duper easy. Um, one thing that I will know is that these cells are not connected to my team page. Um, and the reason that I do that is because we have a lot of people for our, um, for our YouTuber league that like to do team preview videos. And let's say that, you know, I already did my battle this week and somebody else. I don't know. It, basically, it's just not going to fudge the numbers, um, so that way they look m more or less wrong for that week. I don't know. It basically, like, it one, it makes shit so that way I have to go in and put it in manually. Um, but if you're not a YouTuber league, uh, I do it because, like, the team builders, people like to make videos on it. That's what I meant to say. Excuse me. Um, people just like to make team builder videos, and I just don't find it to be very profitable to move these around. Um, and so if, you know, let's say we get bumped down, then we literally click, we hold control and X that will cut it. And then we can just control V and move that down. It does. It's so simple. Um, so yeah, now we're going to move into the Q and a part of the video. Okay. So, uh, squall four, one, three asked, uh, he gave me a few questions to ask. So do we have to count KOs in game on our own the answer to that is yes what he means is during the match as y'all are duking it out you will have to keep track of your own ko's you don't necessarily i take that back you don't necessarily have to do it during the match but if you don't you need to have um a recording of the match um just download obs a link will be in the description download it um even if you're not doing this for youtube it's a good to have one a video um recording device on your computer um but then also record the match, so that way, um, if you're not going to be keeping down, you know, Glissopod, KO, Terrakion during the match, you can go back and watch it and make sure that everything is accurate and that nobody, you know, might accidentally fudge numbers, etc. Um, I will ask that um, at least one person record the match, so that way, if there is an unofficial thing, uh, or if something went wrong, let's say somebody accidentally missed typed or they forgot something or whatnot there's proof to back it up i will highly 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 recommend that just so that way there's no way to fudge numbers or anything like that um so yeah how do we count ko's um you just count one two three four you just count i don't know you, it's just, you, how many how many how many mons did cinderace knock out three okay then he had three kills i, I don't know that seems like a pretty straightforward question 
what impact will stats have on other than the obvious win-loss ratio? So stats overall, um, the win-loss ratio is what he's talking about here um, and here. This is the record. Uh, you know, it would be one, two, whatever. Um, so what KOs do is this one determines differential, which is huge because this will break ties um, in the event that... Um, in the event that two people are tied, like right here for the IBA, in the IBA, um, the Hawaiian Como O's and the Vegas Corvinites, their record is tied. So what we do after that is, okay, let's say two teams are tied. Then we go to the next best thing, which is differential. Um, so as you guys can see, the Hawaiian Como O's have a differential of plus two, and the Vegas Corvinites have a differential of minus six. Therefore, the Hawaiian Como O's get the higher seed in that uh, situation. If they have the same record and the same differential, great, okay? Th this m this very rarely happens. But if it does, then you go to the amount of kills. Um, so in this case, let's say they're both, you know, at plus two. Um, if, you know, the Vegas, the Hawaiian Como'os have 47 kills, but the Vegas Corvinites have, you know, 40 kills, let's say. Uh, let's just say they have 40 kills. Then the Hawaiian Como'os will still be slotted in the higher seed because they have more kills. Um, and then the deaths in that case wouldn't matter because the differential is the same. Uh, if they're differential, their kills are the same, then their deaths are going to be the same. Uh, in which case, I usually how I would is I would default it to whichever team was uh, on top the week prior. So if the Vegas, if let's just say that there's an absolute draw, they are absolutely tied in every sense. What I would do is I would go back to the previous week. If the Vegas Corvinites were on top, but they dropped down this week because of their match, then uh, if they are well and truly tied this week, I would put the Vegas Corviknights on top. Now, if you're in playoffs and you don't want to determine it that way, if you think that's kind of cheap, have them do um, a scrimmage match. It won't count for differential. It won't count for anything. It will literally just determine who makes it into playoffs, um, which I don't think that has, I don't think that will ever happen, um, just because that is so incredibly rare to happen that it, the odds are just astronomical if that does happen. Um, but there is a way to break ties in that case. Um, so yeah, um, other, other than win loss ratio. So the stats don't have too much on win loss ratios. Um, that's usually just determined by, um, how many wins and losses you have. That's overall the biggest thing is like, if you win more times than you lose, then you're going to have a higher seed more than likely, but this is just to break ties and all that fun stuff. And it also, um, now you might be thinking, why do I need to keep a team page? Well, one, it shows which mons your opponent has and is able to pick from because in draft leagues one thing that's different between draft leagues and singles and vgc is that they have a limited pool of pokemon to choose from which means that they have to be very careful about their selections and you know that okay they're gonna have between you know these 11 pokemon what this does is you know if i brought cinderace all 10 weeks you can bet your butt i'm gonna bring it the next week because i've brought it every week prior i may as well bring it again you can you can it's definitely a way to get the edge on your opponent of, do they do they bring this too often? They've only brought it once or twice and it's week 10? Okay, I probably don't need to be worried about that mon unless it really goes in against your team. Um, yeah, the amount of wins just shows how many times it was on a winning team, but the amount of kills shows how big of a threat it is. So if we go back over here to the IBA, um, as you guys can see, uh, my Cinderace has 17 kills. That is a crap ton. For singles league that is a crap ton of kills um and so that means that this thing is going to be very offensive and you need to be worried about it okay this thing shows that i am an offensive fire type and that you need to be prepped for it um what the deaths show is that yes i do bring it a lot um and that you know seven out of the nine times that i bring it it dies but i get a crap ton of kills so it doesn't it doesn't matter um you know how many times if i'm dying if it's still profitable it's profitable um so yeah other than that, um, I think that's pretty much everything that y'all need to know. Um, I'm going to try not to make this video too much longer, but yeah, just having everything written down is the biggest thing that I can, you know, advise. Have a match stats uh, pay or channel in the Discord server uh, that you're using um, and only post match stats there. Don't do like, oh, this was like, you, it's okay if you have like one or two reactions below it, but don't make that like your lobby and where the discussion is. Discuss that in the lobby. The match stats page should just be used for using match stats. Like it, it's match stats. Like just post them there. So that way you have a history of, you know, if, it, if something gets mixed up, which inevitably it will, 
Um, even I make, I make mistakes all the time when calculating it. And so before playoffs, I will go back and I will redo everybody's stats page from the ground up. From week one, every kill, every death, everything will be looked into. So that way I know that, you know, nobody is going to not make it into the playoffs on a, because of my mistake. Um, so yeah, J just making sure that everything is very well kept. Uh, so yeah, other than that, let me know down below what questions that I may have missed. Um, you know, j anything that you guys can think of, I will definitely be in the comments below answering questions. Um, even if it's from a year from now, I'll still have notifications on. Um, and so I will still be answering y'all's questions. Um, be sure to subscribe if you guys did enjoy the video. Um, and, you know, just to support me. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not very big at the moment, but every subscription matters. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this very, very in-depth uh, guide on how to keep match stats in a Pokemon, dis uh, in a Pokemon draft league. Uh, so yeah, I'll see y'all later. Bye.